Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, and thanks for stopping by again. Uh, the last video I put up regarding um, the survey, I have taken that down again because the situation has changed, it needs an update, but we're still working on it. Uh, in the long term, I think we've got some things going, but we're looking for ways that can be helpful to people in the near term as well, and that's a more difficult, uh, but we're, we're working on it. So there'll be another another report on that to come. It hasn't been forgotten, I can assure you. Now I want to talk about something that I had an essay up about on the old web Retirement Wave website, and since the new one's not yet up, that particular essay is not available to people, I realize today, and yet it's a question that does come up from time to time. And this is really to a specific group, so it may not be of special interest to you, but that's what happens sometimes with these videos. We, we zero in on a particular group. In this case, uh, there are some grandparents who are concerned about their grandchildren growing up and not being there uh, and seeing them quite as often as they are used to. Although sometimes they live three, four thousand miles away from them in North America and don't really see them that often anyhow. But it's still that feeling of separation. and the expense they're going to have to go to and, and setting up the plans and everything to return to see the grandchildren. And I often say to them, you might spend less time thinking about that and think more about bringing them down to see you. Because this is the gift you can give them. Now, the world is a crazy place. We're going through a crazy period. But the simple fact of the matter is I've been through this for 50 years. Trust me, we're still going to be moving toward uh, more and more involvement and living and working and studying and what have you in other nations, other parts of the world for the foreseeable future. There's just too much of value in it to give it up. Uh, this is the 21st century and it's not going to be a repeat of the 20th. So we're, it's not going to be an easy transition all the time. But it will continue, and right now, despite all the international squabbles that go on, and some of them pretty serious, nonetheless, for the great bulk of people on the planet, life simply goes on as always, and includes involvement with other people in other nations. Now, your kids, therefore your grandkids, when they get to be 20 or 30 or 40, they may think in terms of overseas travel, of overseas living, they may find it's necessary. If they really want to succeed in their particular area, if you're in marine biology, for heaven's sakes, yeah, you want to go spend some time in Australia, the Great Barrier Reef, or you want to spend some time in, in South Africa, or you might spend some time in Panama. We have uh, the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute here. It's the only uh, office of the Smithsonian outside of the United States, the only operation, and it's been here for a long time, and it does excellent work in tropical research. So if you're in tropical research, Panama is a place you may very much want to live in. Now that's marine biology. Of course, obviously too, in terms of business, where you're selling goods or services, you're doing them all over the world. Odds are, if you want to rise in your, in your career, you will have to get there via jobs in more probably more than one, more likely three or four countries as you work your way up. So for them, the idea of moving and living overseas may not just be something exciting and adventurous, but something necessary to move ahead of what they're doing. So if you can bring them down to visit you and to spend some time with you here, and they haven't done that before, and it's not common to them, which is true 99% of the time, then by all means bring them down so that you see them here and entertain them here. As long as, I'd say two weeks in another country is worth two months easily of sitting in a classroom studying about other countries. Uh, a month is like four months in a classroom. And in any case, a much higher quality experience, so much more a learning experience, and so much more fun. Now, young people, when I see them down here, I see them visiting, they take care of themselves pretty well, whether they're 7 or 17. Obviously, if they're younger, they're around you most of the time, but as they grow older, they reach out to others. They, they find each other, and they cross language barriers, which really aren't barriers. Uh, enough people speak a little English here, a little English there, a little Spanish here, a little Spanish there. They, they get by uh, much, much more easily and with, 
with less embarrassment than their grandparents do when they come down and with greater ease. So for them, this is like, wow. At first, they might be a concern, I don't know, what, what you're going to be like. They'll learn rapidly enough that it's a friendly country. And if they're out on the beach and somebody's playing volleyball, they could probably hang out in the area and they'd probably get invited to join at some point and, or to kick the soccer ball around. All they have to do is take their own soccer ball down to the beach and they're busy for the rest of the day because they'll find other people who will be happy to kick it around with them. This sort of thing. It's, uh, but beyond that, too, is all the interaction with people in stores and just traveling around and talking to people, seeing uh, the Biodiversity, the museum here in Panama, for example, in Panama City, uh, or any of the old sites that can be found. I miss this so much. And the beautiful wildlife and the jungle and blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's, it is a real educational experience of the first order. And if you can do it more than once, that's even better. But the key point is that when they have done this, they're going to go back with a very different attitude. And it can make a very big difference to them. Because I know that in high school, when we had to choose a modern language, uh, I chose French, but Spanish was the alternative. Uh, it was miserable. I mean, I, I didn't have anybody to talk to outside the class. It, it didn't have any connection with reality. It was just a bunch of words on paper, and my teacher repeating things, and my repeating them to her, and, Having to learn where all the accent marks went and everything else, it just, and Lord knows all the tenses. It was difficult and boring. That's all I get out. I had one chance up in French speaking Canada. My mother was born in Montreal. Uh, we were traveling up there, and it wasn't enough. <laughs> I've been there for a few days. And I made some efforts to speak, and of course, French Canadians. Um, speak a little bit differently than the French, and they certainly do speak differently than Bob spoke back then. <laughs> so, communication was limited. But under these circumstances, it's much easier down here. And when they go home, and they, if they are going to speak, they're going to choose a language, they may choose Spanish just because they've been there. They've already learned a few words. They can connect it in their heads the language with people and with surroundings and with the nation and what have you. It's a different type of experience. If they're already learning Spanish, oh Lord, you know that, wow, that, that makes a huge difference. And even if they never study a word of Spanish, it's whatever they go on to study, they are going to get something out of this experience that they can carry with them. And so I often think that I, I treasure the moments that I was with my grandmother from time to time. But there was those special moments when we were somewhere different, where things were very, very different. And we both had to react to them, that I really got to know her, and I really remember those best of all. These are the moments they can spend with their grandparents, which won't be just another visit with grandma and grandpa, but will be something much richer and fuller than that. And it, you don't even have to make mention this will be useful to you in your career later because you don't know. But although that's a real possibility, the point is, who cares? It's enjoyable right now. And they'll, have a, they'll be a step ahead of the other kids in the class who've never set foot out of Germany or Japan or the United States or wherever you come from. I think it's a, it's a great gift that can last for a lifetime and be one of those memories of Grandma and Grandpa that they are never, never going to forget. Now, that may not be enough, and I understand that. Please trust me on that. But it's something I think we need to give thought to when we talk about our loved ones. And my attitude with my family and friends is, you love me that much, you come on down. <laughs> I welcome you here, because the experience, that experience is going to be <clears throat> most useful, more useful to you than me just going back to the same old place I was before. So it's just a thought, it's an idea, something I wanted to share with you. It's a different perspective and a different way of looking at it, and a positive way of looking at it. So if that's helpful, great. Uh, otherwise, thank you very much for dropping by, and I look forward to seeing you the next time.